welcome back to that dad guy it is december the 8th 2023 outside it's about minus two degrees um there's still snow out there i don't know if you can see it let's focus there yeah still snow out there but it's supposed to be a little bit milder this weekend and then like 13 degrees on monday so the snow should be gone there that's my weather <laughs> update this is what we have to talk about today if i can pull it up here it's all the mail that arrived this week. Two official post crossing ones showed up, and then the rest is direct swaps or surprises. There is a bit of delay in the mail, I think, because uh, there is someone who said that they sent me something, and uh, it has been a little while, and they're not that far away. So we'll continue to wait. I always uh, preach patience when it comes to uh, post crossing and with snail mail. So hopefully, uh, whatever they sent will arrive soon. And then I can send them confirmation that I did get it. So that's coming up. Before I carry on too far, I want to say uh, if you're new to the channel, hopefully you'll consider to uh, subscribe, you'll like, leave positive comments, and share with other people. The other thing I want you to do if you're a stamp collector and uh, you haven't had a chance yet, go to Liverpool Stamps and check out their website. If you go to liverpoolstamps.co.uk and you're interested in Penny Reds, they're giving us a special deal that uh, between now and the end of December, if you buy Penny Reds from them, that you'll get 25% off if you put in the uh, discount code TDG. So that's all you got to put in, TDG. Um, they've got a lot of great stuff there. So if you're a stamp collector, go check it out. There's my plug. All right, let's get into what showed up in the mail this week. And I'm going to start with the official post crossings like I tend to do. And this is one that showed up, this nice Indonesian mailbox. This comes from Anita. And she says, hello, uh, this is a mailbox during the Dutch occupation of Indonesia. Now this mailbox is no longer used. We directly deliver to our post, um, our mail and our postcards to the post office. So I hope you like this card. I do I always like shaped cards. There are the Indonesian stamps that are on it as well. So thank you so much, Anita, for this card. The next and the last official one that I got is uh, mailboxes from Russia. This comes from Elena. She is a teacher of biochemistry at a medical university. That's fantastic. She says she loves science. She loves reading books and her pets. She has dogs and a cat. So Merry Christmas, best wishes. Wishes? Uh, wishes. <laughs> there are the Russian stamps. And so thank you so much, Elena, for that card as well. I appreciate it. Always love things that are postal related, mailboxes, letter boxes. I did do a couple of videos on those from the world uh, a couple of years back now. But uh, if you're interested, go back and check it out. All right. The next card I have comes from my friend Lewis in Spain. He sends me this Dungeons and Dragons card. We both have the same collection of Dungeons and Dragons cards. So every once in a while, I'll send a card to him. And he sometimes sends that exact same card back to me. So it's kind of fun. And then here are the stamps. And he's a member of the Unicorn Gang. So he's got his unicorn on there as well. What nice Spanish stamps on there. So thank you for that. He wasn't done. He sent a Christmas card as well. Very sparkly. All the gold is kind of raised so you can feel through it. If, so if you're someone who uh, enjoys things of touch and feel, there you go. Uh, and there is uh, one of my favorite stamps that he has sent before on a number of cards. So I love seeing that showing up. All his nice Christmas theme there as well. So hopefully you're going to have a nice holidays and uh, you'll hear good news on things you're waiting for. All right. The next card envelope comes from Media in Finland. And there is a nice stamp. This stamp has uh, the last four presidents that they had with their wives of Finland. And she says two of those presidents have now passed and they're in the process of getting a new president. So there'll be an election for that. There is the first card that was inside. Here is the second card that was inside. Nice uh, Christmas card with hedgehogs. She finds fabulous cards. And she also explains uh, the stamp on the back of that card. And then the final card, which is my favorite of the three, even though the hedgehogs is cute, is this one here. And she says, uh, you can probably guess that it, a Christmas sauna is a must for many people here in Finland. And she says she usually goes to have her sauna on Christmas Eve. And this is a kind of a painted card. 
There's the artist name at the bottom. So yeah, definitely a favorite. Uh, we don't have a lot of saunas here, so I'm always curious about the ritual. Uh, sometimes you can find a sauna in a hotel, or if you go to a, a spa, they would have them. But not a lot of private saunas. So thank you so much, Media, for that. The next card is a meetup card, and it comes from uh, Christian in Austria. He went to a meetup in Vienna. Uh, there are the participants, and there is a stamp with the beautiful cancellation. So that was on November the 17th, so thank you, Christian, for that. And then uh, also on November the 17th, I got this card from Carl, also in Austria. I really like this meetup card. Very cute, very different. There are all the participants. And there is the stamp with the beautiful Christmas cancellation on there too. So thank you so much, Carl and Christian, for the meetup cards. And then I have one more card that arrived from Austria. This one comes from my friend Anita. And she sent me this uh, Christmas card. A woman in a beautiful red dress with her present. And uh, what really stuck out for this not only is it a Christmas card and her decorations with that, but look at this stamp. I'm not sure if it's doing it justice or not on camera, but it is just beautiful. That uh, sleigh. Um, yeah, that is a fantastic stamp. So thank you, Anita, for that. Now, the next card um, I thought was interesting. If you watch Snail Mail with Smokey, he recently got a uh, official post-crossing card from um, Bhutan, I believe, from an Andre. And uh, Andre and Merritt are friends of mine. They came to one of my meetups. They sent him an official card. They drew his address. And then so while they were in Bhutan, they sent me a card too. It's not an official, so I don't have one of those uh, small numbers on it of uh, post-crossers that are there. But I am very happy to have this card. And the stamps from their trip and uh, they were also in Nepal so they sent me a second card and there is the stamp from Nepal so I love seeing where Andre and uh, Merit travel to next uh, they have gone to some fascinating places around the world and uh, I've been very fortunate that they send me cards while they're away Speaking of someone who sends me cards while he's away, this one comes from Ross, and uh, Ross was in England at the time when he sent this from Scotland, and so he found this hedgehog card, and there is the stamp, the Christmas stamp, so thank you so much Ross for that, hopefully you had a nice trip, that was sent on November the 11th, so uh, he's no longer in Scotland, uh, he may be home by now, or he may be off in some other uh, exotic location. The next one is a card from Zach in Illinois in the United States and uh, he's had these cards designed so you kind of have uh, Joseph and Mary with baby Jesus all in kind of anime form here. There's been a little damage taken to the card in travels um, so unfortunately for that uh, he sent this he was getting ready for Thanksgiving in the U.S. There are the stamps. Thanksgiving has now passed, and now he's getting ready for Christmas. Thank you, Zach. All right. This next card comes from France, comes from Quarantine. And uh, so this is his town. He always sends cards from his town on here. Or so far, he has. And on the back, he has sent these beautiful stamps. Talking about um, stamps and the postal service and how things have changed uh, with scales and measurements that you would see in a post office all the way up to more present day scales that you might find. Um, so it was really nice to see a thematic card with regards to the stamps. And he gives a nice history of it here too. So uh, I kind of summarized it there. He wasn't done though. He sent the second card. You can see another one from his town, beautiful structures. Uh, it looks like just a beautiful French town. And uh, he says, winter season has finally arrived in France with its first negative temperatures, which means uh, scraping the windshield every morning before going to work. Having watched my videos, which I published on November 25th, but I am writing on November 26th and wanted to wish your mom a good recovery. Uh, 
it, it's going to take a while. Uh, she did, she broke a, um, or fractured a bone up by her shoulder. And uh, so it's going to take time. So I thank you so much for uh, thinking of her and sending that. And uh, so he sent some stamps on here. There are some collaboration stamps. Canada and uh, French both put out stamps about Vimy Ridge. 100 years of Vimy Ridge. This was back in 2017. Uh, I've shown the, the Canadian stamps before, but there are the French stamps that go with it. So I haven't had a chance to have those in my possession before. So beautiful to see that. And then these two stamps, it said, are uh, from 2016. Uh, they're called the Tyne Rage and Issues in France from 1876. That's what those stamps are. So a reissue stamp that came out 2016. And then the Vimy Ridge stamps. So thank you, Quarantine, for those. And I just love having those Vimy Ridge. Uh, Vimy Ridge means so much. All right. The next card it comes from Jackie in California. We've got another Happy Holidays. And the Christmas cards start to roll in. Uh, he said she wants to know if Polo is helping decorate the tree. There's Santa and Apollo there. But I'm not sure if he's going to help decorate the tree, but a likeness of him might be on the tree. Let's just say that. All right. The next envelope comes from Great Britain. There is the Christmas stamp. It has not been cancelled. In it, I got a Christmas card from Mark. So we have that. This is raised. It says, for a family who always put the fun into Christmas. Christmas pudding. And then inside, wishing all the family a happy Christmas and a fun full time of laughter. So thank you so much, Mark, for sending that card. And in it, Mark sent a couple stamps. So uh, let's just open this up and have a quick peek at the stamps that he sent. Beautiful stamps of Queen Elizabeth II. Always love seeing new images of her. I have not seen these stamps before. Um, he also sent the stamps of Isle of Man. Three of the Isle of Man and a three in the series with the Queen. So thank you so much for those stamps, Mark, and for the nice card that you've addressed to both me and my family. I really appreciate that. We'll put that card up and have it on display. So thank you so much. The next, another envelope, we've got some classic Stamps on, on this, too, that make up the postage. This comes from Monty in Saskatchewan, and Monty sent a Christmas card as well. We have this one here. And I uh, just wanted a quick note to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I look forward to a 2024 full of post-crossing and swaps. All the best, Monty and his wife Violet. And in it, he also uh, sent a couple stamps, thematic stamps. We have... One from South Africa, nice little hedgehog. We're getting that. And then uh, another hedgehog from Sweden. I have seen the Swedish one before. I haven't seen the uh, South African one. So thank you so much, Monty, for that. Put those back away here so I don't lose them. And I'll slide them back down in the envelope as well. Now, the last card I have has a bit of a story to it. Uh, it's this nice one here of a little deer. This comes from Bob in Ontario. It's a prepaid card. And uh, he got them at a good deal. He went to a yard sale or something or other and found them. And it doesn't really matter how much he paid for them or how many he got. But he did get them for a good price. And uh, in 1972, when this card came out, it cost $0.08 cents to mail a a letter. It now costs 92 cents to mail a letter. In Canada, you can see it was postmarked 1972 when he bought it. It was blank. He put my information on it as my mail to and wrote his little blurb to me. And then he popped it in the mail on uh, the 21st of November to see if it would get here. He didn't add any extra postage. 
He just put it in. Now it had been canceled already. It had a, so it was almost like a first day issue uh, or it's kind of a maxi card if you will, because it's got the same image on it, but it was canceled. It had the postmark 1972 and then he filled in the rest. He put it in the mail to see if it would get to me and sure enough, it did get to me. So he was able to send me a card, not from the past, he didn't mail this card in 1972. He mailed it in 2023 and got to me. Uh, it would be kind of strange though if he mailed it in 1972 saying, hmm, I know in the future someday um, there will be a guy that'll be born that'll do post-crossing videos and uh, we're gonna send him a card and see if it gets to him in 2023. Might be an interesting movie title or a movie script, I don't know. Anyways, Bob, you can do with that as you wish. Um, but. As far as I know, this was mailed because he's dated it, the 21st of November, 2023. And for $0.08, cents, he sent me a card from Ontario to New Brunswick. And the post office didn't stop it. They didn't say this has already been used because it had already been cancelled. Uh, they let the 1972 postmark go all the way through and get to me. Uh, so fantastic. Now, he did say that in the lot of cards that he bought, there were some other prepaid cards. So... Uh, he wondered whether or not he could send it internationally and get away with it and use it for post crossing. I didn't think that would probably be a good idea because normally you don't put your return address on it. So if he did that for an official card for post crossing, uh, they may never get it and uh, he might never get it back. So it would be a card loss. That would be a shame. I like the fact that he did it in a direct swap to me because if it never reached me, no harm, no foul. He could send me a message on Instagram and say that he tried this and it didn't work. But uh, he could try it again, or he could do it to somebody else in Canada and see where it goes, or if he had an international friend he was direct swapping with, he could try it. I'm not sure it would be lucky every time, but I am glad that uh, this card from 1972 made it to me. So uh, good on you, Bob, for uh, not fooling the postal system, but getting one by and uh, getting that card to me. That is all I've got today. That was a good week. I had a lot of fun with what I had. Um, I am curious to see some of the other things that people say they have sent and haven't reached me yet uh, when they will arrive, hopefully uh, soon. And so I can get messages back to them saying that uh, things have happened and uh, I've received their mail. Well, what do we have? Tomorrow, we have That Dad Guy Answers. Now, normally I ask you to uh, leave me questions, and I'm still asking you, leave me questions on last week's Saturday video, and I'll answer them tomorrow. But I'm doing things a little bit different. I've kind of gotten into this live mindset now. Uh, I put out uh, a scheduled live on Wednesday, live stream video that is. I told people that I was going to go live at 2 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time, and I did. And those people that wanted to join or could join, uh, joined up and did it. And then other people are watching after the fact, which is alright too. Um, and then on Thursday, I was planning on taking the day off. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go live again. I was making supper. I thought, well, I'll show people what I was going to make for supper. Anybody who comes on will chit-chat a little bit. And we did that again. So I am really enjoying the lives. They are very different from shooting a video like this. Uh, I like the interaction that I'm having with people. And uh, some of the same people keep showing up live after live. So tomorrow, That Dad Guy Answers is going to be live. So it is going to be at 9 o'clock in the morning, my time, 9 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time. I know that that is not ideal for anyone west of me um, because if you're on the Pacific Coast, as in uh, California or British Columbia, it is going to be five o'clock in the morning when I'm going live. You probably won't be up. If you are, I appreciate it if you join. Um, even uh, those of you in uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, New York City, Washington DC, Toronto, uh, it's eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Um, so if you join, that's great, but I understand if you're still in bed or taking your weekend off or if you have to work on the weekend, you're at work. I get that. It might be a little bit better for those people in Europe or in the Pacific Rim though. So we, are, I'm excited to see who is actually going to come on and ask me questions live because that's what I want it to be. I want people to be able to ask questions right away and we'll get answers out. Uh, it's alive, so it probably will last longer than my normal uh, shot videos that only are about 10 to 20 minutes long. Generally, uh, my lives have been about an hour every time just because people get engaged and I get engaged with uh, with them with what they're talking about. So 
Two ways you can give me a question. Leave it on last Saturday's video and I will bring it up on the computer screen while I'm live and I'll be able to read them and answer them. Or join the live. Ask me a question directly and we'll get an answer right out. So that's tomorrow. I look forward to it. I hope you guys will join and uh, have a magical week. Like Polo? You say like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy?